guys. So today I thought I would do um, a little bit of a different video. I'm going to talk about all of my cookbooks. Well, not all of them. Let's be real. I have like 30, 35 cookbooks. Um, but I want to talk about some of the ones that Tim and I are trying to use right now. Um, first off, ignore the background. I am in our office and it's a little bit of a mess right now. I'm still trying to find a spot in my apartment to do videos that has a nice background. But with good lighting, the spot has the best lighting. But it's not, anyway, oh well. So. Um, if you're interested to see what kind of cookbooks Tim and I are using and are trying to use and why we want to use them, um, keep on watching. Okay, so um, I have a pile here, let me show you, of cookbooks right here. Now, we have a shelf in our dining room that has a lot of just regular books on it and then we have the upper shelf is where our cookbooks are and the reason why we have them in our dining room is because that's the center of our apartment and we love to cook absolutely love to cook obviously that's why we have this channel but i have been gifted so many cookbooks and have purchased so many cookbook cookbooks in the last like six years it's ridiculous i have gone through and decluttered so to speak all of my cookbooks and I think I got rid of like 27 28 cookbooks when I did my declutter and I still have like 30 cookbooks guys it's ridiculous so but I never use them I never use them and I always want to get more cookbooks because I think oh this cookbook will be really fun and it'll have a lot of fun tips and great recipes but I won't allow myself to buy them because I know that the chances of me using that cookbook are very, very slim. So to combat that issue, because I mean, I can't deny myself cookbooks, I, Tim and I have discussed having the cookbooks out, going through and picking recipes that we want to try and making ourselves do new recipes once a week which is awesome because that works perfectly into my YouTube channel, like my recipe of the week idea that I want to do and my um, recipe first impressions, which I will do in a separate video. I have that planned. I'll talk about the series, but I wanted to talk about the cookbooks that we're going to be trying to use. Now in this pile, there are two, four, six, there are eight cookbooks. Um, and I'm going to give a brief little history about why I got these cookbooks or how they came into my life, what we have made out of them so far, and what I think of them. Okay? So like I said, if you're interested in this video, keep on watching. So the first cookbook we're going to talk about is this one. It's the Dash Diet Cookbook, and it's quick and delicious recipes for losing weight, preventing diabetes, and lowering blood pressure. So as you can see, we've tagged a lot of recipes and things but I got this cookbook um, probably almost two years ago now and I bought it because my grandmother and my mother have severe thyroid problems and my grandfather has high blood pressure and is pre-diabetic and I've been told that I have to monitor my blood sugar and being a pastry person monitoring my blood sugar is challenging just to even wrap my head around so I'm like how how can I do this and I started doing more research and going back to the few nutrition classes I took in college and I tried to come up with ways to help myself because that's what's most important is my health and Tim and I found this cookbook when I was down visiting his family and we went through and kind of peeked through it and we thought "Ooh, a lot of these are really yummy recipes things that we'd actually eat talks about nutrition facts which is something I need to pay attention to so that's what I really really liked so we decided once we purchased it to go through and tag recipes that seemed interesting to us so we could in the future be like, ooh, I need a breakfast recipe. 
I could flip to the breakfast section of this cookbook and find all of the recipes we've already tagged and know that they're already going to be interesting to us. Sorry guys, I had to readjust myself. But um, we went through and tagged everything like I said, so it would be like a little shortcut for us when we were looking for some recipes. Now, um, a few things we've tagged are things like chicken fajitas with a spicy avocado sauce. Um, Asian style lettuce wraps with a peanut sauce. Cobb salad. Um, different dressings. Quinoa salads. French toast fritters, things like that. So food that I still love to eat, but with better ways of eating them and better ways of producing them. So that's why we got that cookbook and that's why I love it. And it kind of got shoved away in our pile. And I was like, you know, this is a good one to have, especially this year when I'm trying to come up with new recipes and things like that. This is great. So we're going to pull this out and we're going to use it. So that's cookbook number one. The second cookbook that we have pulled out is the Good Housekeeping Cookbook. Looks like this. Very worn, very rugged, things are kind of falling apart. And this cookbook, we haven't made anything out of it, but this cookbook was my grandmother's and it was given to me when she passed away. And again, we haven't made anything out of it yet. But the fact that I have it and it was hers means a lot to me. She died at a rather young age um, from cancer. And it's just a little piece of her with me. So um, is it necessarily one that's going to be healthier for me? Probably not. But you know what? It's a piece of her and that's all that matters. So we're going to try to do a couple of recipes out of here. Just those comfort recipes that she would have made for my dad and my aunt that my dad may be passing down to me. So that's something that um, I'm really excited to use. The next one is the Professional Healthy Cooking Cookbook by Sandy Kapoor. Kapoor, Kapoor. Um, I got this at my college, which was Paul Smith's College, and they were doing a clean out of the library and they were getting rid of a lot of books. And a lot of the books were like, 10 cents a piece so I just grabbed a whole bunch um, another reason why I have 30 plus cookbooks um, but this one again is about healthy cooking and it gives reasons why you should eat certain things when you should eat th certain things um, it gives the characteristics of different types of food like for example I'm on this page here and it talks about types of legumes and it just talks about the types of beans that are here, what they look like, what they're good for, how you can get them. They talk about high protein plant foods. Um, they talk about how you can calculate your daily protein requirements, which some people don't get enough protein, some people get too much protein and all of that stuff. So this is one, again, we haven't actually cooked out of, but we are excited to try because one thing that we want to do in the future is Tim and I want to own a food truck. Now, that is more of a Victoria dream, but Tim does think it'd be a lot of fun as well. And that's like a 10-year goal for me. You know, I'm hoping by 20, 28, 28, yeah, 2028. Um, wow, it's weird to think of it like that. But anyway, by that time, I'm hoping to have my own food truck. And that's going to be a professional kitchen setting. And I want to serve healthy food. I don't want to serve all carbs. I want to support a lot of local vendors. And I want to serve a lot of healthy food. And I think a cookbook like this that could teach me about more nutrition and why you should eat certain things and when you should eat them throughout the day, I think will be really helpful for my food truck. Plus, it has some pretty interesting recipe ideas. So that's the next one. And then... The fourth one, fourth cookbook now, is Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Child, Simone Beck, and Louisette Bertol. Bertol? Bertol? Yeah. Um, but it's volume one. Tim got this for me for Christmas a couple years ago, and I just... I love Julia Child, you guys. I... I love her, love her, love her, love her. I have for years. 
Um, I remember being ninth grade. We had to do a report on someone we wanted to be, and mine was Julia Child. And I don't need to be famous like Julia Child. That's not my goal. I want to be knowledgeable like Julia Child. I want to be able to whip anything up and have it taste good like she could. And I want to be able to publish a cookbook someday. I think that'd be a lot of fun and take a lot of hard work, but could be really rewarding. And so Tim got this for me. Now, again, we haven't cooked anything out of it because as soon as I got it, I put it right in my cupboard because I was so happy to have it, and then we never used it. So you know what? We're going to use it this year. It's going to be like the Julie and Julia project, only I'm not going to blog about it. We'll vlog some of it, and I'm not going to do all 500 and some odd recipes. Oh, my goodness. How many is it? 520 recipes, something like that, in 365 days. I'm not doing that. But I think it'll be a lot of fun, and I'm really excited to cook out of this. I mean, this is a piece of history right here. <sighs> so excited. So that's cookbook um, number four. I cried when I got that cookbook, by the way. I, I cried. Moving on. Um, cookbook number five is the Complete Vegetarian Cookbook by the Test Kitchen. Um, now this cookbook we got very recently. I actually bought it as a Christmas present for Tim and the reason I got it for Tim specifically was because around Thanksgiving his mother and sister were telling Tim and I about how they had gone basically vegetarian or mostly vegetarian for a few months and how they were noticing a lot of health benefits, um, some weight loss, and things like that and they were really happy with it and they wanted to share that with us and Tim who is an avid hunter and fisherman who will never go completely vegetarian looked at me and said I think we should try to do some more vegetarian recipes and I said okay sure because again for me it was building that culinary repertoire and I was really excited about it but we learned very quickly within the following month that a lot of what we knew about vegetarian cooking was very very limited our knowledge was very limited and we never felt full after a meal we never felt substantial like there was oh that was a good meal we were always left hungry therefore we were eating two to three times as much food to help us feel full which wasn't helping us I was defeating the whole purpose of everything so I went online on Amazon and I found this cookbook I think it was like 30 yeah 30 bucks um, it has over 250 vegan recipes and 500 gluten-free recipes. And that was a big selling point for me because not only was the cookbook vegetarian, but there were a lot of gluten-free things. And I do not have celiacs by any means, but I have personally noticed that when I eat gluten, um, whether it's pasta, bread, crackers, anything like that, I tend to get severe stomach pains. I get very, very gassy and I don't feel well. I do not feel well for a couple of days until it's completely out of my system. And I get very bloated and it's just, it's not a comfortable feeling in any way, shape or form. So the fact that a lot of these were gluten free made me feel good because I said, oh, I don't have to fill up on bread or pasta to have a vegetarian meal every now and again. So again, we kind of did the same thing. We went through and tabbed just a few things that kind of caught our eye. And we've done a lot of cooking out of this. Our goal was to do two vegetarian recipes a week out of this cookbook. Um, and we did that for probably almost all of January. But now we're down to doing it at least once a week just because of budgeting and time constraints with work. But what we've done is we actually back up a little. The very first recipe we made out of this was this tart. Does that not look delicious? I mean, look at that tart. Oh, it was so good, you guys. I can't even. So it was just a tomato um, herbed tart. So it was just a buttered crust, okay? We found it in the cookbook. It was so easy. It was a buttered crust with herbed ricotta cheese filling and salted sliced tomatoes. You bake it, you top it with some fresh basil, basil top it with some fresh basil, and we drizzled some fig balsamic vinegar on it, and oh my gosh, we've made it like three times now since we first did it, and that was on New Year's Day with his mom and sister. 
and we love it. So what we've done is whenever we've made a recipe that we like, we have gone through, for example, like this right here, stuffed tomatoes with couscous and zucchini. Um, we have marked it with this type of little tab because that says that we've tried it. And then we rate it star wise. So this is rated five out of five. So if we're looking back through and we're like, okay, we want a new recipe. No, we want a recipe that's vegetarian, but we've already tried it. We know we like it. We can just tab right to any of those and flip through them and we have all of our answers. Now, I think there are two recipes that we have to tag that we've done very, very recently um, and talk about what we did. Like last night, we did cheesy stuffed, let me see, cheesy stuffed poblanos, which were really good. Probably give them a four out of five. I have to talk to Tim when he gets home and see what he thinks. But those stuffed tomatoes with couscous and zucchini, oh my gosh. We actually um, filmed a video doing that. We made those last week and I'm going to upload it uh, very soon. But, oh, so good, you guys. If you're looking for a good vegetarian cookbook, this one, for sure. So good, so worth it. His mom and sister even went out and bought it. So, that's that one. Um, now, the next three, or the last three, are all Pioneer Woman cookbooks. Um, I love watching her, and I wish I could watch her at home. Um, we have Netflix and Hulu and she's not really on either of those so it's really hard for me to watch her without like going on YouTube or something but when I was in school and I had cable I watched her every single day and I love her I just love how she started off living in LA she was a vegetarian for like I think it was like 20 years or something or she was a vegetarian most of her life and now she lives on a cattle ranch and eats a lot of meat and I just I think it's really interesting so I have three of the cookbooks now we're gonna start with these ones so this was a set so she started off in 2006 on a website called the pioneer woman and she was a photographer and she was just showing kind of her life on the ranch and like I said this comes with two cookbooks so one of them is the Pioneer Woman Cooks Recipes from an Accidental Country Girl, which is what she calls herself because, again, she was never going to be one that was going to live in the country. She was never going to eat meat, and here she is living in the country on a ranch eating meat. And so this one just has recipes that she would make for her kids. There's French breakfast puffs. There's buttermilk biscuits, cinnamon rolls, twice-baked potatoes, cheese and grits, um enchiladas, linguine with clam sauce, just some of those basic things. Roasted beef tenderloin. Now, a lot of these things like biscuits, I know how to make biscuits. Are they the best biscuits? No, but I know how to make biscuits. So it's not like this is a cookbook that is going to take my culinary repertoire above and beyond, but she has some interesting spice combinations that she puts in a lot of these that I think are really interesting and that'll help my cooking a lot. Um, I think if anyone wants just a good standard cookbook that has some really nice recipes in it for maybe a more novice beginner, um, this would be a really good one or this set would be really good. So I don't think I've made anything out of this one yet either, but I love it and it's sitting on my counter. Oh, the mocha brownies. Oh my gosh, our mocha brownies are so good. And it's been sitting there and Tim and I are like, you know what? Let's use this cookbook. If we want comfort food like fried chicken. There's like a recipe in here. Why not make it? So that's one. Um, the other one in that set, which I have cooked out of, is the Pioneer Woman Cooks Food from My Frontier. This one's definitely thicker. It was, I think, her second cookbook. Um, we have made onion rings out of this, or onion strings. We've done fried chicken out of this, which is another thing. She has a different fried chicken recipe in like each one with different spice combinations and I love that. Whiskey glazed carrots, um, vanilla bean ice cream. She even has things like how to make jam in here, which is really cool. So again, I have cooked out of this. It's really nice for that comfort food and Tim and I definitely want to cook out of this one some more. Pop that back in there. And the final 
cookbook that we're going to talk about today, like I said, is also a Pioneer one. This is her most recent one that just came out. Tim got it for me for Christmas. He also got the other ones that I just showed you for me for Christmas a couple years ago as well. Um, but this one is Come and Get It. Simple, scrumptious recipes for crazy busy lives. Much thicker than all the others. It's definitely heavier. Um, in this one, I believe she had opened the mercantile, which she has helped her hometown or her town of where she lives. And they've opened this little mercantile where there's a restaurant, there's a shop and offices and things. And she has a lot of different things in here. So she has like salad on a stick, chilled veggie and cream cheese sandwiches, um, queso dip, roasted red pepper soup, marsala mushrooms and goat cheese flatbread, which can I just say, looks delicious. Now I am not a, um, a goat cheese person, but I can appreciate a good photo. Haven't cooked out of this one yet. Again, I got it for Christmas and I'm like, you know what? It can't sit there like all the others. So I got to cook out of it. All right. All right, guys. So those are the eight cookbooks that Tim and I have pulled out. As you can see, we've cooked out of some, haven't cooked out of others, and something that we're going to do in 2018. We're going to use our cookbooks more. Um, and so, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about any of these cookbooks, please let me know. I'll try to link them below. I'm still learning how to do that and how to include um, product information and things, so if anyone can give me any tips, that would be great. Otherwise, if you found this fun or entertaining or anything like that, please subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!